Marie-Louise, are you ready for your star turn? Yes, I am. I'll Would be you like willing me to, to share... share screen? Yes, I'll need to share screen. No worries, let me just find you. Where are you? Uh, oh, you're there. Uh, there we go. Okay. You have the power. Whoa. As, Paddy, as Paddy McGuinness would say. All right. I'll try and put it in present mode. Um, I can see you, Sue. So if you can kind of give me the thumbs up, that all looks okay. Yeah, fab. Okay, so I have tweaked sort of one of my talks to try and put a bit more of a marketing spin on it. So I've looked at uh, 10 ways to improve your marketing with Canva. And um, So um, for those that don't know what Canva is, it's a free and paid for tool. You can have um, on just sort of access it through a web browser. There is um, an app for your mobile and apps for your iPad. I don't recommend the iPad app. And what it does is it allows you to sort of take control of creating sort of content for yourself. So it could be uh, creating a flyer. There's, uh, it's really good for social media in particular. So things like Instagram posts, you can use it for presentations. So this is done in Canva. Um, and I think you can do pretty much anything in Canva. Um, I, I haven't come across anything um, as yet. And there's lots of great features like um, doing video, more so for short video. Um, there's animations um, and it's just a really good tool for people who are both designers like myself but also non-designers so it's definitely worth having a look at if you haven't already seen it. So when you're getting started with your marketing if you're sort of whether you're a new business or sort of taking a fresh look at your business the first thing you want to be doing is sort of doing a bit of brainstorming and planning and this is useful to do sort of maybe once a year, every quarter, um, it ties in sort of maybe with your sales plan. Um, if you've been on Julie Futcher's um, workshops, they're fantastic for kind of getting your head around the sales side of it. But really getting down and thinking about, you know, what are all the products or services that you do? Uh, what's your USP? You know, what makes you different and stand out or how you do things a bit differently? You know, what's memorable about what you do? Uh, think about pricing um, in general, as well as for these different uh, products and services, your message and target market. So it's good to get it all down there. And you can use Canva. There's, this is sort of one of the uh, templates. So you could make it all look pretty um, and uh, print it out if you wanted to, or have it as a digital document that you keep uh, updating sort of every time you need to revisit it. So I mentioned defining your target market, and this is something that I bang on about a lot when I am um, both sort of meeting um, a potential client, um, sort of getting stuck in with the branding, as well as sort of my Canva training, because it um, your target market is going to inform everything that you do within your design. You need to know who your customer is. You can create an avatar or um, which is basically working out who your ideal client and you might have more than one. So for example, with Lovely Evolution, I've got two. I've got the kind of more branding side of things, particularly rebranding and then the Canva stuff, which I've been concentrating on a lot more in the last few months. So do you have a niche market? So that ties in with your sort of service that you do as well. And think about what problems do you solve um, as a sort of starting point, but you want to have a real clear idea of who are you talking to? Who are you aiming at? Because if you're just going, oh, I'm aiming it to everyone and anyone that has skin and is breathing, it's going to be forgettable. It's not going to help with referrals as <clears throat> Jackie Sherman um, trains on. It all ties in. You need to have a yeah. clear idea. So thinking about what your message is. So that could be in general as a broad stroke in terms of your branding, sort of what your uh, business 
um, stands for, you know, what are your core values, but also in a particular post, for example, if you're doing a social media post, what are you trying to say? And you don't want to try and say everything. <laughs> you want to kind of get at least one key point across. You want to um, try and say it in a way that um, matches your tone of voice, that it ties in. So it might be a bit more conversational. Um, it might be um, more professional if you're a sort of financial uh, body, for example. Or it could be that you're kind of quite fun and kooky. Um, and it could be you know, a, a sort of a blend of a couple of things. But you want to have a clear idea of what you're trying to say. Sounds obvious, but it, we can kind of get a bit off piste with that. Um, actually, just back to what your message is, don't forget to have like a call to action as well. Um, that's something that I'm not very good at myself. I'm getting, I'm hopefully getting better at. But you, you know, if you're putting a post out there or creating a flyer, you do want to sort of tag on there, you know, what action do people take next? So you're either giving them some sort of tip or information or telling them about what you, how you can help them. Um, or, but you also then need to let them know what do they do next. Okay, so with your brand, hopefully you've got some colours as part of your, uh, your logo that um, would have been created by your designer, or um, you know that's something that I can help you with if that needs tweaking. Um, but when you're in Canva, you could, the first thing I recommend you do is you put in your brand colours in what is called the brand kit. And if you don't know what your logo colours are, there's a really good tool that Canva has created, which is a colour palette generator. You can just Google that. That's the link there. Um, and you can upload your logo or any photo and it will pick out um, some key uh, colours that are in there. And it will give you something called the hex code, which you can then go and stick into the brand colours. In the free version of Canva, you can only uh, customise the uh, colour palette in the brand kit. You can't do the other features like add your logo, although you can upload your logo just as a normal image and you can't um, customise the brand fonts bit. Um, but it's definitely something that I suggest you do. Okay, another part of your brand and um, is important as part of your marketing is making sure that you use fonts consistently. So if you start font and that font and, and it's, it's going to look sloppy, it's going to look unprofessional. Um, people may not necessarily pick up if there's only a slight difference, but this is where, um, you know, if you are having a, um, starting with a template, you want to, um, you want to make sure that you're customising it to your branding and I'll show an example of that in a minute. So once you've got an idea of what your colours are, you've got your logo, you know what font you're going to use. Um, don't worry too much if you haven't got the exact font used in your logo, you want to pick something that maybe is similar or uh, works quite nicely, it might uh, complement or contrast with your logo, kind of the font used in there, but you want to make sure that it's consistent. And one way you can do that is create your own brand guidelines. So this is a couple of examples here where we've got the colours shown, we've got some examples of fonts and text used, the different versions of the logo, and it's a kind of one page cheat sheet. You could expand this brand guidelines with examples of photos that you've got, you know, if you've got an image library that you're growing, um, you know, any kind of elements that you like to use that really start building up your look and feel of your brand. Okay, so I mentioned customising your template. So please, if you're going to start with a template, which is totally fine, make sure that you think about well, what are your colours. So I've customised this um, second one, the after, to being kind of on brand with mine. I could take it one step further and include my logo on it. Um, you don't always have to, but you know, it depends on what you're trying to do with it. Um, so I've changed the colour, so that's one of my brand colours. Um, I've changed the swirly font, I've picked something, I've picked my swirly font that's part of my brand that's similar. And then I've also customised the Happy Valentines. So that works. Oh, I've also changed the filter on the image. So it's sort of tonally 
in the, the kind of aquas. So that takes that, you know, it's taking something that's already existing out there. You're not having to reinvent the wheel, but I'm making sure that it fits with my brand. So another key part of um, marketing and, you know, with a particular piece that, you know, you're working on, you want to make sure that you're grabbing attention because there's no point sort of putting something out there where all the text is the same size. Um, you know, it's hard to read. Um, it's maybe just a couple of colors and there's not much contrast. So you need to think about, well, what's the focus of your design? So here are some examples. These are existing templates. So I've not done anything with them, but I picked them for different reasons. So the seafood grill one, I like that because it's very clean and simple. You can really clear, the, the first thing your eye goes to is the seafood grill. So you know straight away, if you're gonna read one thing, it's seafood grill. So the middle one, um, it's very designery. Um, it's quite graphic. It's maybe a little bit, excuse me, harder to read because of the black on the quite dark colour of the contrast, I probably would have picked a sort of brighter um, colours behind in that kind of ombre effect. Um, but it's quite bold, there's a balance between, um, and again, your eye will still read the focus, you know, the digital strike wording is what you would read first. So on the th uh, third one, um, that one I would say is probably the most eye-catching. You've got the bright orangey red, there's a kind of high contrast, um, almost clashing colors the purple with the um with the kind of the orangey red but the focus i feel is sort of both on the color of the orange and the um the face you know you're drawn into the eye there's a sort of shape there and the you know there is other information on there but you read you sort of look at her face and then you kind of see the sort of sail which is you know repeated so that also works quite well so if you were to use one of these templates, like I said before, you would customize it to your brand, um, you, you know, tweak it as you need. Um, you'd also make sure that you would update the image so that it's appropriate to what you're trying to say. So talking of imagery, um, the type of image that you choose is also going to be important. So this is um, the concept of a meeting. So on the left hand side, you've got a more corporate um, meeting. I mean, obviously we're not meeting like that at the moment, but that's the sort of image that I would see in a lot of kind of um, professional, maybe sort of financial. Uh, it's sort of quite a stock library type image. Um, and it sort of evokes certain feelings there. The one on the right is still a meeting, but it's more casual. It's in a uh, coffee shop of some sort, possibly. Uh, it's a bit more informal, the people wearing something a bit more casual. I've got two minutes. <laughs> okay, I'll wrap up soon, hopefully. Um, I'm nearly there. So you can also add stuff like um, overlays of colours that are semi-transparent. You can also add filters um, on the left-hand side with the sort of more traditional meeting image. I've done an overlay, uh, done a filter with black and white. Um, and then on the far right, there's a sort of very high coloured purpley filter that's been applied. So you can add all of this sort of stuff to, um, create that brand look, you know, in terms of the imagery, um, but also making sure it ties in um, and appeals to your target market. So just quickly, a top tip, adding photos. So you've got the photo tab, which has got lots of free photos. Um, there's also some photos that are only available in Pro. If you struggle to find what you want, you can also click on, there's like, if you go all the way down to the bottom, there's three dots and you click on more and you can access Pexels and Pixabay, which are two free um, image libraries that have been bought by Canva. So they're now integrated, but they're kind of hidden away. So if you're struggling to find your exact image that you need, try looking there. Okay, and you wanna be creating a set of templates. So as you sort of get more confident using Canva, building stuff, you know, maybe working with me and creating a lovely set of templates to get you started, but you want to see that it's all part of the same family. There's a particular language in terms of the consistent colors, fonts, image styles, maybe effects. 
Um, so hopefully you can see that from there. Here's just some examples of stuff that I've created in Canva, not necessarily from templates as such, but just to show that I have done some pop-up banners, you've got flyers, I've created logos in there, uh, Facebook um, graphics and stuff like that. So there's all sorts. And finally, how you can work with me. So please come and join my uh, Facebook group. It's called Lovely Canva Crew. I have shared the link in the chat. Um, I've got various things that you can sort of work with me. I do one-to-ones, I've got mini masterclasses um, and the membership. And um, if you're a member of Buzzcom, which I think most people are here, you can get, um, now this is where it's a bit of a tongue twister. <laughs> you can have the membership free for three months as a Buzzcom member perk. Um, it's in the kind of offers bit when you log in to Buzzcom it, and you kind of go to member benefits or whatever, member offers. If you click on my name, it's there. It's just a MailChimp link. Um, or if you're already signed up to my uh, newsletter and you would like to access the free uh, membership for three months, uh, then drop me a message. I know that Hayley, when we had a one-to-one, -one, she was saying, um, she, I think she's already in my newsletter, so I need to make sure that she's accessing that. Sue has been enjoying the uh, the free membership. I have. It's very good. Very good. So, yeah. So that's me. Any questions? I can see something popped up in the chat. Uh, I think that was Steve having to leave us, unfortunately. Oh, okay. okay. But yeah, any questions for Marie Louise? I have one. Uh, yeah, okay. Kelly. Um, the free version versus the paid version of Canva. Um, is I know you said that you can't add on um, some of the colorings and things like that on the page. Is, is there any major ever major differences of what you've yeah, just shown so that in, you can't do on the free version? So I I only upgraded to the pro version towards the back end of last year, and it was only because well I'm I'm sort of yeah building myself as the expert in this and I was noticing more and more people had upgraded so it was useful to have an understanding of that but I do use the free version for some clients and you know part of the fast fix yes there are some benefits to upgrading um, but I would say that until you reach a point where you feel it's necessary that you're getting a bit frustrated or you want to access those I would just stick with the free um, I guess sort of um, Hayley because you might start doing sort of the odd social media stuff for other clients and you, you may want to do it in your account um, then having the pro would be useful because there's mm -hmm. things like folders and stuff like that. Okay. Um, I keep meaning to sign, sign up to an affiliate so don't don't upgrade until you've spoken to me so I <laughs> as an affiliate I may have like they usually do like offers and stuff you get um, a few pennies yourself yeah yeah every <laughs> right. bit counts yeah um but yeah it's it the it's it's personal choice I think you okay. can get away with not upgrading quite frankly um so yeah uh okay. Devar's got his hand Thank up you. he has yeah I just wanted to say that's that's a really good presentation thank you um oh thank you no questions. Just. No, All right. <laughs> just a, okay. Hey. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah, I have a question. Um, yeah. Can you get the semi-transparent um, on the free version, or is that just on the paid version? When you want to put text, overlay text on the on the transparency. No, that's a free feature. That's something where you would have um, you would put an image, like either in the background or it's just in you know in the, just the image is there, and then you just literally take a shape uh, element uh, and or I think most things. Um, I did some training on adding the animated stickers, and even those you can make semi-transparent, so you can go all the way to like five percent, you know, to whatever strength that you feel. It's a, a device that I find really helpful to be able to. Um, add a bit of interest, make sure there's enough contrast with your text with, if you're putting, you know, if you've got a pattern background. So yes, you can do transparencies in the free. Okay, that was a really excellent presentation. I've yeah. seen Thank so you, many Jackie. presentations on people who think they're all, they, they um, yes, so they are social media experts. They don't have the background of marketing about the touch points and um, the tone of voice that you mentioned. They just haven't got that congruency. So that was amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Nice way to end. Yeah, Yay. excellent. <laughs> Thank you very much, Marie-Louise.